More on your side? Yep. Looks good. Here he is. Hey, thanks for renting us out this place before you see an open, mate. Oh, pleasure, mate. Happy birthday. Anyway, a bit of free advertising doesn't hurt. Now, I reckon I'll fix you up now for the joint before it gets out of control, yeah? Well, no rush. I know where to find it. No, I'll get it sorted now. Can you whack it on the plastic? No worries. Hey, uh, Josh, do you reckon this is enough balloons? No, 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 keep going. Oh, are you serious? Come on, this is killing us. Hey, are you doing money business over there? It's under control, Kel. No, that's not what we agreed. Kel, it's on me. All right, happy birthday. I don't think so. Kel, it's all right. We'll argue about it later. Don't accept the scent from me, all right? Transaction declined. What? Are you serious? I keyed it in twice, mate. Look, don't worry about it. Just sort me out later. Well, it's never done that before. There's got to be a problem at the bank. Try it again. Try it again. Insufficient funds. Look, um, I might be over there. I'll be out if you're looking for a way to make some extra cash. Well, we can't do any security work if that's what you're asking. Oh, no. no, I'm not talking about um, bouncing. But something else. Something serious. Cash. Look, hey, you think about it. I can't believe that you two were born on the same day. I know, she looks five years older than me, eh? Sarge, mm. you're going to come to our party tonight, aren't you? Where is it? Pet club. Oh, is it loud? It's no, a club. Please, Constable, don't speak. Yeah, no. There you go. Yum. That bloke of yours seems pretty generous. Yeah, he's all right. Has he always been in nightclubs? Mm. It's his first one. You're kidding. Mm. He seems very comfortable in there. He's got it all happening. What was he doing before? Why the sudden interest? <laughs> no reason. All right, everybody, party's over. I've got to call out to a shoplift in Penhope Road. We haven't done anything. Well, there's one way to find out. Give us a bag. Why? Because I want to see what's in it. It's just my stuff. Told you. Your turn. You saw we didn't have anything. Come on. Come on. You uh, want to tell me about this? Well, I guess you won't be needing me then. Uh, not so fast. All right, one of you in here. I don't care which one. OK, good. We'll be in here to talk with you as soon as your mum arrives, OK? And that puts you. In here. Take a seat. Our shoplifters? Yeah. Career criminals, by the look of them. Both terrified. Rosie Jarvis? You know her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a, she's a friend of Freya's. She's a good kid. And she had a $150 dress in her bag that she didn't pay for. Her cohort's in the other room. I uh, was just about to call her mother. No, no. No, her mother uh, died in a car accident 12 months ago. Hello, Rosie. Mr Jacobs. Had a bit of trouble this morning, eh? Want to talk about it? No, no, I'm sure you don't. But look, we do need to talk about it. Don't worry about your father. Just talk to me, OK? Now, how did that dress get in your bag? I don't know. Oh, come on, Rosie. Yeah, it's all right, uh... It's all right, Derek. Did you put it in there? No. Right. Did Juliet put it in there? No. Well, looks like we've got ourselves a bit of a mystery, eh? Don't look at me. I've spoken to you before, haven't I? No. Let me see. What was it last time? CDs. Don't know what you're talking about. What did you do this time? Set your friend up to be the fall guy? Smart thinking. You're getting very professional in your approach. I haven't taken anything. Yeah, you know, I don't believe you. Hey! Hey! Oh, <laughs> Took your time getting here. Oh, you know, mate. How are you? Very well. Oh. Hey, mate, cop a look at you. Yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, you didn't iron that shit yourself, oh, did you? I did, as a matter of fact, yes. You know what? You should wear that tonight. Chicks love a guy in uniform. Why do you think I joined the cops? I thought it was for the gun. <laughs> Where's your gear? Oh, it's right outside, mate, in the car. Come on, can you knock off or what? Uh, yeah. Excuse me. 
Um, sorry, Joss, there's a phone call for you. Right. Hello. Kelly, Rob, Rob, Kelly. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks. <sighs> Just give us a sec, right? How long's Rosie been getting around with Juliet Smith? Oh, I don't really know. I've never met this girl. Right, well, she has been in here before. And so she put Rosie up to it? Oh, more than that. She's more than happy to let Rosie go down for it. You know, not the sort of kid I'd like my daughter to be hanging around with. Oh, I don't know what's going on with her these days. She's a changed girl since her mother. Look, anyway, I gave her my sternest lecture on uh, the perils of shoplifting and the uh, slippery slope towards life imprisonment. Mm. Oh, she's a good kid, Derek, I know that. Maybe the mere fact of being hauled down here will uh, make a change the way she views things, who knows? He's a good man, your father. He's worried about you. Wouldn't know him. Of course he is. Fathers do. They worry. And they want them to tell the truth. He just wants me to be quiet and fade into the background. Look, I'm sure that is not true. And what would you know? Well, I'm guessing here, of course. He's been he... like that ever since Mum died. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about anyone. Now, um, it's only a one-bedroom place, so I'll sleep on the couch, all right? Mate. There's a party on tonight. If I play my cards right, I might not even make it back here at all, so don't worry about it, all right? All right. Speaking of which, tell me about your friend Kelly. Uh, 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 uh don't go there, all right? You sly dog. You kept that one pretty quiet. No, we're just mates. But you can? No, I'm not. So she's got a boyfriend? No, she doesn't, Rob. So where's the problem? The problem is that I know you and I don't want you anywhere near her, okay? <laughs> and you're supposed to be my mate! David Marbeck. Hello. Hello. Now, um, you do know you cost me 50 bucks. First one to get engaged wins. So, by rights, she probably owes you half. Oh, good. Oh, Thank no you. way. I had to earn that. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Second round already, eh? Looks like a big night. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I showed a birthday boy a good time. <laughs> Beers all around, Chrissy. Righto. Can you make one of those, Jane? Yeah. You know, that girl with your friend Kelly, she's a bit of a cutie. This is shape enough to be a good night, mate. You're really trying to cause trouble, aren't you? It's a party. <laughs> I'll settle it later, eh? Right, no what are you doing? Man, I haven't paid bar prices in years. Hey, you can't do that. It's not BYO, boyo. No, this is medicinal. Hand it over. Get it back later on your way out. So grasshopper. That's why I'd like you to meet Julian yeah, and hi. Gina. Hi. Oh, come on, Jones, you can do it. Thanks for the thought, but no. It's fine by me. Let's get back to the dance floor. Have fun. Thank you. So do you come? Oh. 
This party is sensational. Yeah, you're having a good time, aren't mm. you? I'll drink to that. Would you, do you want some? Oh, what is that? Oh. Can I have some water, please? I've got to work tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Mm. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Fine, fine, fine. How's it going? Yeah, hey, not too bad. Thanks. So you, uh, thought any more about our little chat this morning? Um, no, I haven't had much time. Look, I heard about your car. Now, I think like that can be a real setback. What you need is a leg up. I don't know if I should be asking this, but what exactly would I be required to do? Your mates look like they enjoy a good time. As good as anyone? Yeah, well, let's just say it's, uh, it's about keeping the good times coming. and Prue hangover cure. I don't have a hangover. Oh, can you please go easy on those bumps, Joss? I'm oh, sorry. All right. Well, maybe I've felt better, but I seriously reckon it's lack of sleep more than anything. Might have something to do with those bright blue cocktails you were downing last night. Hey, maybe there was something toxic in the food colouring to make it that blue. Yeah, it's called alcohol. Oh. No, seriously, you should trust me on the hamburger thing. I don't, I don't think. Look, I know it sounds bad, but it actually works. Oh, right. That's the way. Matt Thomas, 900 to 208. Receiving you, Sarge. We've had a report of someone sleeping something off at the railway station. Could you take a look? On to it, Sarge. Over 208. Just wait in the car, will you? No, I'm not that cruel. No, seriously, just wait in the Is car. It... Help. Help. Allison? Just wait in the car. Just wait in the car. Allison? Help. Get off me, John! What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her, Josh? What's wrong with her? No, 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 There's a serious bruise there, but I don't think that would have killed her. She's not a druggie. Still, it looks like she may have taken something. Alison didn't do drugs. She didn't even smoke. Look, I'm really sorry, Kelly. I know she's your friend, but we have to look at it as a possibility. I mean, there's no sign of trauma to the body other than the bruise. I went to school with her. I've known her all of my life. Well, the autopsy report will sort it out. I'd like to be the one to tell her parents. Where do they live? Melbourne. Well, 
I'll call the local station. They can send someone round. It's better in person. No, they know me. I'll tell them I can probably give them information that someone else couldn't. That's a tough call to make. Please, it's something that I can do for her. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yep, I'll let you know as soon as I know any more. Okay. Bye. You all right? Why don't you just ask the Sarge if you can go home? I'll be okay in a minute. I think I could have made that call. I don't recommend it. I'm so sorry. Probably for that stupid birthday party, you guys wouldn't even be here. Hey, it's not your fault, Kel. All right? If anything, it, it's mine. I'll find out what happened, okay? Mr. Marburg? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, we're still waiting on the preliminary autopsy results, but I'd say that your fiancé died of a drug overdose. Drugs? That, that's impossible. Well, that's what it looks like. She didn't even like drinking. Irrespective of the cause of death, we need to establish uh, as much as we can about Alison's movements last night. Of course. Maybe if we start from when you're at the party. Um, well, we, we were having a good time. Alison was dancing a lot. So you were both dancing? Not so much. I'm not really into dancing. <laughs> Who was she dancing with? I'm not sure. Was she dancing with anyone in particular? Rob. Something. Rob Pittman. How do you feel about that? She can dance with whoever she likes. It's not what it looked like to me. You were angry, weren't you? She was making a fool of herself. I told her that. It was, was embarrassing. Did you argue? Fine. I took her outside and tried to talk some sense into her. And did she listen? Just got annoyed told me to leave her alone. I tried to get her to come back to the hotel, but she wouldn't budge. And then this bloody jerk she was dancing with turns up. Mr Pittman. He comes out and sticks his oar in. I'm sure you weren't too happy about that. I told him to piss off, but he wouldn't go away. He kept asking Alison if she was all right, like it was any of his business. So how'd you stop him? I hit him. You hit him? Bloody oath I did. Well, what was Alison's response to that? She went straight to this Rob to see if he was OK. And told me to leave her alone. And did you? I was furious. I went back to the hotel. So you left her alone? I left her with him. If anyone gave her drugs, it was that sleaze. Rob, get up. Hey, Rob. whoa. <laughs> He's up to seven. Oh, man, what the hell time is it? Something happened. It looks serious. Alison Campion died last night. <laughs> no shit. I think it was a drug overdose or something. Bloody hell, she was a nice girl. Yeah, I know. Apparently you were one of the last to see her alive. <laughs> Doubt it. Well, outside the club, the fiancé, David, said you guys had a fight or something. Should I uh, admit to that, Councillor? Uh, don't muck around. Come on, just tell me. What happened? Nothing happened. He was drunk and giving her a hard time, and when I tried to intervene, he turned on me. And then what? And then I dropped her back to the Imperial Hotel. And then? I went back to the party. Did you give her drugs? No. Did you have sex with her? Just 
What is this? Rob, I saw the way you were dancing with her. Come on. Yeah, well, that was dancing. So you promised you did not give her anything and you did not have sex with her? Cross my heart. Pittman, this is Senior Detective Fox. G'day. Thanks, Constable. Just tell her what you told me, all right? Yeah. Just do here. What the hell was that? David told me about Rob sleezing onto Alison. He didn't have sex with her. Oh, is that what he told you? Did he deny giving her drugs as well? We don't even know she took drugs. Yes, we do. Preliminary autopsy results. GHB, which is gamma hydroxybutyrate. Classic date rape drug given to her by your friend who then raped her. What? They found traces of semen. No way. He dropped her off at the Imperial and went back to the party. He says. Look, she could have taken the drugs off her own bat. What are you saying? All of a sudden she starts taking party drugs and screwing around? Yes, it happens. With your friends, maybe someone gave this to her. Well, it wasn't Rob, all right? Oh, crap, he's a lying bastard. Listen, he's my mate and I believe him, all right? Well, then he's a bastard and you're a fool. Hey. Someone who was at the party I did last night. Bloody hell. One of Kelly's friends. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. Are you? Or did you sell her the drugs? Why are you asking me this? Oh, I might have something to do with the offer you made me. About how I could make some money by selling drugs for you. Remember that conversation? Whoa, hold on, Joss. I never said anything about selling drugs. You don't have to. It was pretty clear. No, you misunderstood me. That is not what I meant. Did you sell GHB to Alison? No. Let me tell you something. If, hypothetically, there were drugs at this establishment, then it wouldn't be GHB. That stuff is seriously dangerous. I wouldn't touch it. Look, before you go, someone left this here. Thought it might be one of your mates. Yeah, it's Rob's. Thanks. Hey, hey, hold up. what happened. Uh, would you rather speak to the young constables here? I mean, your dad and I can go and have a coffee. How about that? No. Whoever did this shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Assault is a very, very serious offence. They might do something worse next time. Had you thought of that? Now, was this in any way connected with the, the, the shot stealing? You in trouble for something you did or didn't do? It's got nothing to do with her. Nothing to do with who? Juliet. Did she do this? Well, Miss Smith here denies everything. Is that right? I haven't done anything. Yes, well, we shall see, young lady. Happy with your treatment by the police here today? Whatever. Excellent. I'll just get your mother to sign here. Come through, Chris. I think you need to hear what Chris has to say. Really? And I think Joss should hear this as well. Anything else? Chris? Go on, Chris. I was putting out the rubbish late last night in the car park when a car drove up. It was Joss's friend Rob and Alison Campion. Who was dropping her off? Not exactly. They were kissing. He was being really persistent. She was trying to push him off and get out of the car. Then he yelled at her, he got out and then he drove off. Well, that's not what he said. She gave me a kiss for driving her home. Just a thank you kiss? That's right. No fondling? No. Hmm. That's not what our witness said. She said that you were being 
very persistent. That's not true. There was a bruise on the victim's face. Did you cause it? No. But you were seen struggling in the car. We weren't struggling. She was hysterical. I was trying to calm her down. By kissing her? She was kissing me. Oh, come on. You wanted sex. That's why you drove her back to the Imperial, wasn't it? No. And when she didn't come across, you raped her. That's not true. Did you have sex with Alison Campion? No. Would you be willing to provide a DNA sample? No. No, I wouldn't. Why not? Why should I? I haven't done anything wrong. A friendly face, thank Christ. That bitch has really got it in for me. your mouth, you idiot. Sorry. You're in enough trouble as it is. Yeah, well, I'm under a fair bit of stress here. Look, do yourself a favour and give them this DNA sample. So first I raped her and then I murdered her. Is that the story? And now they want a DNA sample and you expect me to go along with this? Yes, because that way they'll leave you alone. This way you're just making yourself look guilty. Joss, I do the right thing. I give this girl a lift home because her dickhead of a boyfriend is giving her a hard time and now I'm the bad guy. Look, I know that's how it feels, but if you don't give them a sample, they'll get it anyway because they've just applied for a court order. <laughs> what? Can't you do something about it? Like what? What do you mean? I don't know. Fix it. Mate, you're starting to scare me. Come on, Joss. Do you really think that I'm capable of something like this? I know him. I grew up with him. I trust him with my life. Well, if you want to help him, the best thing you can do is get him to provide some DNA. I tried that. He doesn't like being forced to do anything he doesn't want to do. He's always been like that. Can you have a word with Amy for me? Sorry, mate. I have to agree with her. I'd do the same. But if you do want to help your mate, you can try and find out who killed Alison Campion. Are you kidding? Rosie gets a hiding so that she'll keep her mouth shut, and you're still charging her. Yes, well, Derek, we haven't got a lot of choice. She won't tell us who assaulted her, and she's admitted to the theft. The only thief is that so-called friend of hers. Rosie had nothing to do with it. Oh, God, she'll have a criminal record. It'll follow her everywhere. Yeah, unless she changes the story. She won't. Look, you couldn't have another guy talking some sense into her, could you? Derek, the question you have to ask yourself is why your daughter places so much value on this friendship. Why do you think? Her mother's only been gone a year. It's left a huge gap. Yes, which she's filled by associating with this young crook instead of the father who's supposed to love her. Oh, you think I don't love her? Yeah, look, what have you got on this afternoon? Yeah, some appointments. Cancel. Well, we've been knocked back on the court order. No, why? Insufficient grounds. So we have to let that piece of slime go? For now, yeah. My friend gets drugged, raped and left to die and we have to let the guy who did it walk out the door? You don't have enough evidence. More than we've got against anyone else. Wouldn't be so sure about that. What's this? David Marburg's record from New South Wales. 2001, possess amphetamines. 2002, traffic prescribed substance to wit veterinary tranquilizer. But I came down here to get away from that stuff. It doesn't look like you're doing a very good job. I cleaned up my act because of Alison. That's the truth. She wouldn't have had a bar of me if I'd had anything to do with any of this crap. She hated drugs. You told us you went back to the hotel after the party. Yes. Yeah? What time is that? I don't know, maybe about half past two. Yeah? What'd you do then? I went for a walk. You went for a walk in the middle of the night. Why was that? Alison wasn't there. I went out looking for her. Were you angry with her? I was worried. I didn't know what had happened to her. You weren't angry with her even though she wasn't back at the hotel? No. Even though you thought she may have gone off with this Rob Pittman, the guy you hit outside the pep club? Did you find her? No. You sure? My understanding is that she was stopped by some patrol crew from St David's last night. Wasn't Alison with you at that time? Yes. Why didn't you tell us that before? I was... embarrassed. Because you and Alison were fighting? Yes. So you did find out? 
she was sitting by the road. Go on. I asked her if she'd been with that guy and then... I hit her. I shouldn't have done that. I was just... I was just had way too much to drink. Um, and then the police turned up, so we stopped arguing, and when they left, I went back to the hotel by myself. You just left her there. <laughs> See, I think it went further than that. I think you were angry. So angry that you assaulted her, raped her, and then left her for dead. No, no, that is not true. Okay, I couldn't do that. I loved her. So has Marburg made any admissions? No, but he was the last person to see her alive, as far as we know, at which time he assaulted her. Not enough, I'm afraid. We've door knocked every house in between where Alison Campion and David Marburg were seen arguing in the rail yards. Any witnesses? All too sensible to be up at that time of night. <sighs> so what's next? A warrant to search his place at the Imperial. I mean, if he was the source of the G, then there may still be some stuff in his room. What form does it come in, Caps? Uh, probably not. It's usually taken in liquid form. You need something to measure it with. Uh, so we'd be looking for some sort of medicine glass or something? Mm hmm Or the bottle it came in. What does it do to you, this stuff? It, uh, apparently sends the libido through the roof. It worked for David Marburg, all right. Sorry, Carl. Alison and I always used to joke about how hard it was to find a decent guy. She thought she'd finally got one. I thought you'd forgotten me. No, but seriously, mate, thanks for springing me. Nothing to do with me. Oh, no, mate, I know you. You would have been in there pulling every string you could. I don't know what strings you think I can pull. New evidence came up, that's all. Yeah, well, I reckon I owe you a beer. I reckon you owe me too. God, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, hang on. I've got your jacket. You left it at the club. Oh. Just a sec. Sure, mate. Mr. Ross, what is this? Don't give me that. It fell out of your jacket pocket. The medicine cup. Big deal. I use it for cost. Mate, don't play innocent with me, all right? I know exactly what this is for. If they find traces of GHB, you're gone. Do you understand? Not if you don't give it to them first. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Because you'll get a good mate in a whole heap of trouble. Right, so you lied to me. Yeah, that was stupid. I panicked. Did you have sex with her? kidding me? Where? In the car. She was right into it. What, she wanted it? Of course she did. And you gave her G. Because she asked me for it. No, mate, she didn't do drugs. Everyone who knew her said she didn't do drugs. Yeah, well, she did last night. She had some sort of an argument with that Dave guy and she wanted to get out of it. And that were, they, they were her exact words. And you left her to die, did you? No. No, I didn't. I mean, afterwards... She, she went all weird on me, right? She started crying, having re regrets. She kept saying that she wanted to be left alone. I wanted to give her a lift to the hotel, but she wanted to stay outside and clear her head. Wait, if I had any idea what was going to happen, any idea at all, I wouldn't have left her there. Y you have to believe me. Mate, I believed you before, didn't I? So what are you going to do? You're not going to tell that Detective Fox, are you? No, you are. No way. Yes, you are, mate. You're going to go in there and you're going to say exactly what you just said to me. Mate, she will crucify me. No, she's not. If you're telling the truth, you're not going to be in that much trouble. Of right? course I will. I lied to the cops. She's going to load me up with everything she's got. You're a bloody idiot. Well, I know I am, mate. You don't have to tell me, but I am begging you. Please, don't tell anyone. Have you got any idea what position this puts me in? This is my life. Please. So we, um, we struck out on David Marburg's room. Doesn't surprise me. I thought you were the one that was all gung-ho about him. Well, maybe I was wrong. No, you weren't. 
No, I was the one that was wrong. Kel, I just... Listen, you will probably never hear me say this again, so please just make the most of it. All this business with your mate, Rob... I, I just really thought... I'm really sorry. Man of the hour. What's going on? Is there something to celebrate, is there? Mate, it's uh, just a couple of quiet beers. A girl is dead because of your actions. And I feel terrible about it, you know that. But sitting around here crying is not going to bring her back. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Josh, what are you doing? What I should have done in the first place. Something he needs to tell you. I hope you get everything that's coming to you. Never meant for anything to happen to your friend. You may be receiving a summons for possessed drug of dependence. I'll also be looking at whether we can charge you for administered drug of dependence to secure sexual penetration, rape, and manslaughter. Are you sure you haven't left anything off the list? No, if I've forgotten anything, rest assured it'll be added to the list. Well, do I need to stay in Mount Thomas? It's not necessary. We know where to find you. I'm sure you won't want to hang around. <laughs> I can't get out of this dump quick enough. Yes, but you will need to sign the attendance register before you leave. Just there. It must have been very difficult for you. But you did the right thing. Can we really get him on manslaughter? Not a chance. Just trying to give him something to think about. But you don't believe this whole story about it being Alison's idea, do you? It's not, Kel, but without evidence of force... There's... He didn't have to use force. He got what he wanted by drugging her. Kelly's right. This place's getting off far too lightly. But before we can even start to prove rape or manslaughter, we need to establish that he somehow slipped the G to Kelly's friend. He would have mixed it in a bottle of soft drink or alcohol, right? Which means that somewhere there's a bottle or a glass. All we've got at the moment is this medicine cup, and if she's taken it out of that, that means she knew it wasn't kosher, and that supports his story. Well, so why don't we go search the toilet block at the rail yards again and see if we can come up with the empty? Well, even if we find it, we have to establish that he was the last one to handle it. I'm sorry, Kel. So he just gets away with this? I'm afraid so, yeah. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. Maybe yours gone back to Melbourne yet? Oh, he's packing. Sorry to see the back of him. Me neither. Listen, that hip flask that you confiscated from him, have you still got it? No, he came and got it at the end of the night. Well, if it isn't super cop. What really happened to Alison Camping? I've told you. Tell me again. <laughs> she asked for the G, so you measured her out of those in your medicine cup. Yep. Well, if that's the case, you're not going to have a problem with me taking the hip flask and putting it in for analysis, right? Yeah, well, I don't have it. That barmaid kept it. You're lying. Hey, what are you doing? She never asked you for drugs, did she? You found her at the train station after she had a huge fight with her fiancé. You offered her a drink. And because she was so upset, she accepted, correct? She knew what she was getting into. Bullshit. After the drink, she asked me if I had anything more interesting. I don't believe you, mate. Yeah, that'd be right. Thanks, mate. You've done it before. Tim Dolan's 18th. Remember that? I was watching you when you were giving that blonde double and triple shots all night. Just that is not the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. She was plastered, mate. She had no idea what you were doing. And I didn't even lift a finger to stop you. I'm still ashamed of that. We were all doing it. No, mate, I didn't. No, 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 of course not. No, everything was easy for you. You always had the looks and, and the cars and the charm. You stole every girl I was interested in before I even had a chance to introduce myself. What are you talking about? You had plenty of girls. Not the ones I wanted. Well, don't blame me for that. <laughs> what, now you've got your big shiny uniform, you think you're, what, too good for the rest of us? Well, you know what, mate? Underneath, you are still the same greasy wog you always were. You're the same desperate sleaze. You could never score a girl as classy as Alison. <laughs> That's bullshit. She was putting it out all over the place. Maybe she was. But she'd only come across with a bit of chemical encouragement. She was bloody looking for it! Was she even conscious when you screwed her? She was then. Then? She passed out afterwards. <laughs> right, so you just left her there outside a toilet block, left her for dead. Well, that's something else for you to feel ashamed of then, isn't it, eh? Well, I feel a lot better when you're charged. 
It's not going to happen, Joss. It's only your word, Joss, that any of this ever took place. And mine. You double-crossing bastard. Do you want to do the honours? Oh, with pleasure. Rob Pittman, I'm arresting you for administer drug of dependence to another to secure sexual penetration, rape and manslaughter. Sorry, Kel. Not your responsibility. Well, I always felt like he was. He keeps stuffing up and I pick up to pieces. Thought I was doing him a favour. Just don't think I know how to be a friend. Yes, you do. I'm glad you said that, actually, because I've got to ask you something. <sighs> How much? <laughs> hey, you come here to give us a hand? <laughs> no, nah, I just wanted to have a word with Jason. Hey, Joss. Now, this is for the party. Mate, no hurry. No, no. How about the other matter? Off is still there. Well. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. Just helping people have a good time. I'd rather have a clean conscience. Hey, <laughs> my conscience is perfectly clean. Jason, Susie's a friend and a workmate. But I hate to see her compromised in any way. Susie's all right. You're the one who owes money all over town. You've been making yourself scarce? Ah, just being polite. Showing Gina and Julian the wonders of Mount Thomas. Oh, yourself is here. It's in my blood. <laughs> hey, handsome prince alert. Hey, guys. Hi. Suze, so Jason. Good day. Good day. So what are we drinking? Uh, well, we, we have a little announcement to make. Jason and I are moving in together. So that'll be some champagne then. Best you have. Coming up. Hey, good on you. Yeah, well done. More on your side? Yep, looks good. Here he is. Hey, thanks for renting us out this place before it's even open, mate. Oh, pleasure, mate. Happy birthday. Anyway, a bit of free advertising doesn't hurt. Now, I reckon I'll fix you up now for the joint before it gets out of control, yeah? Well, no rush. I know where to find it. No, I'll get it sorted now. Can you whack it on the plastic? No worries. Hey, uh, Josh, do you reckon this is enough balloons? No, 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 keep going. Oh, are you serious? Come on, this is killing us. <laughs> hey, are you doing money business over there? It's under control, Kel. No, that's not what we agreed. Kel, it's on me. All right, happy birthday. I don't think so. Hell, it's all right. We'll argue about it later. Don't accept the scene from me, all right? Transaction declined. What? Are you serious? I keyed it in twice, mate. Look, don't worry about it. Just sort me out later. Well, it's never done that before. There's got to be a problem at the bank. Try it again. Try it again. Insufficient funds. Look, um, I might be over to help you out if you're looking for a way to make some extra cash. Well, we can't do any security work if that's what you're asking. No, no I'm not talking about um, bouncing, but something else, something serious cash. Look, hey, you think about it. Well, I can't believe that you two were born on the same day. I know, she looks five years older than me, eh? Sarge, mm -hmm. you're going to come to our party tonight, aren't you? Where is it? Pet club. Oh, is it loud? It's no, a club. It's police constable Jones, but yeah, no. There you go. Yum. That bloke of yours seems pretty generous. Yeah, he's all right. Has he always been in nightclubs? Mm. It's his first one. You're kidding. Mm. He seems very comfortable in there. He's got it all happening. What was he doing before? Why the sudden interest? <laughs> no reason. All right, everybody, party's over. Call out to a shoplifting Penhope Road. 
We haven't done anything. Well, there's one way to find out. Give us a bag. Why? Because I want to see what's in it. It's just my stuff. Told you. Your turn. You saw we didn't have anything. Come on. Come on. You uh, want to tell me about this? Well, I guess you won't be needing me then. Uh, <laughs> not so fast. All right, one of you in here. I don't care which one. Okay. Good. We'll be in here to talk with you as soon as your mum arrives, okay? And that puts you in here. Take a seat. Our shoplifters? Yeah. Career criminals, by the look of them. Both terrified. Rosie Jarvis? You know her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a, she's a friend of Freya's. She's a good kid. And she had a $150 dress in her bag that she didn't pay for. Her cohort's in the other room. Uh, I was just about to call her mother. No, no. No, her mother uh, died in a car accident 12 months ago. Hello, Rosie. Mr Jacobs. Had a bit of trouble this morning, eh? Want to talk about it? No, no, I'm sure you don't. But look, we do need to talk about it. Don't worry about your father. Just talk to me, OK? Now, how did that dress get in your bag? I don't know. Oh, come on, Rosie. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, it's all right, Derek. Did you put it in there? No. Right. Did Juliet put it in there? No. Well... Looks like we've got ourselves a bit of a mystery, eh?